What is up YouTube? That's here. Today I'm bringing you guys a Patreon submitted rental code that uses a super sneaky way to get up TR with like Whimsicott Dialga, but it also uses like speed reduced power lens, which is uh, an item that just drops your speed. Kyogre, as well as like an uh, strong jaw, Iron Ball, Dracovish. Before we get into this, I'm going to directly ask you the question today and uh, ask you how many people actually remembered to get the event Dracovish that was given out for the International last weekend. Let me know in the comments, as well as how many actual event Pokemon you own. I'm actually curious in knowing. I have like a lot of event Pokemon, so that's something that definitely interests me. But back to what we're talking about. Um, for the next probably few weeks, we're going to be looking at rental codes submitted by Patreons. We're going to be talking about what the teams do right. We're going to play a bunch of games with the teams. And then I'm going to break down the changes that each team needs to make at the end. So if that's something that interests you guys, think about it. Let me know in the comments. I know a lot of people like seeing these team fixing videos. So this first team right here, it was submitted by Ross. You can actually see on the official Patreon team submission post right here that you guys can also submit your teams to. There's a link to it in the description of this video. We have tons of teams that people are submitting that we're going to use over the course of this next week or so. Uh, they say sneaky TR. Here's a rental code. There's a poke paste. Hope you have fun being sneaky with this team. So we're going to take a look at the exact uh, stats here on all these Pokemon, and we're going to start tweaking these to actually be a little bit better, a little bit more optimal, uh, to help you be a little bit more sneaky if you want. So, uh, you know, we're going to do that at the absolute end of the vid, but first, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to hop in and play a bunch of games with this team. Uh, just to start off with, I think this team's actually pretty cool. I think Whimsicott with Trick Room is always a fun Pokemon to use. I think, you know, Dracovish, uh, really, really cool Mon to use. Dialga Grimm's my favorite thing to use right now. So this, this team has the tools to do well. We're about the top 1,000-ish on the Master Ball as well. Well, so we're pretty high on the ladder and uh, hopefully we have some good luck with this team. Wish me luck. We're going to hop right into it. Here we go. All right. Zashin Yveltal, Lando, Regilecki, and Sin Amoongus. So massive intimidates, fake outs, redirection, limited speed control though. Like Yveltal gets Tailwind, Lando and Lecky can both Airstream. So if I were to get up my Trick Room, I'd probably be in a good spot. This is where I would really have liked to have seen, like, a fake out Grim, because it would be so much easier to get fake out up. But I think, like, oh, that Wimps isn't even sashed. Okay, oh man, this is going to be so hard. Um, I mean, if I do lead Wimps, they'll probably fake out it, right? I think I can probably, I don't even think the Wimps can live the Behemoth Blade, realistically. It's good versus Lucky, though. Um, it's good versus Wimps as well. I wonder what we under speed if they were to go with, like, um, I think I'm going to try these two. Um... And that would just open up a slot for... No, I want to use Dracovish, though. So I guess I'm going to open up with these two, and then bring Dracovish. And Kyogre. Dracovish isn't even, like, amazing, amazing here. It's just going to be really funny. And remember, the reason it has a power lens is so it gets slower. It's also just funny that it has a power lens. You know? Realistically... Actually, the Kyogre has a power lens. Um, wait. Is that the right item? Like, the correct power item, right? The ones that just uh, lowers your speed. Yeah, so um, Dracovish shouldn't have an Iron Ball either. Dracovish should have one of the different power items, just because, you know, you don't want to take big damage from, like, Heavy Slam or something. But we'll see how this goes. First game with this team. Um, there's a ton of little fixes on this team, which we'll be getting to near the end of the video. Uh, cleaning up EVs, cleaning up item choices, stuff like that. If you guys want to see more stuff like that, be sure to stick around until the end of the video, where we go over everything in detail. Let's see what they lead with. I'm not a big fan of this for me. Um, so there's the Amoongus again. You don't really want to get the Amoongus off the board. Sorry, you don't want to set Trick Room until the Amoongus is gone. The good thing is we're so so much of a legend at team preview. Their team's super weak um, against what we're doing. So they could be physical lucky with like Airstream. Um, I think actually the right play for me. I, I almost want to say we protect. But I think I'm actually just going to go for a Moonblast here. Um, if they have Airstream, I, I can't stop that. Like I realistically just can't. And because this Dialga is a lot weaker, we're actually going to double into the Amoongus, get it off the board in the next turn, create a situation where we can like max guard bait with, into the Dialga slot, and go for a Trick Room that turn. So it'll cost us one of our max turns, but hopefully we get the KO on the Whims here. And we're respecting Sash Whims, sorry, Sash um, Amoongus a lot. Again, I, I guess they're not maxing with the Lucky. Um, they're probably taunting, not taunt, oh my gosh, uh... It's my first game of the day, guys. It's like 6 in the morning. <laughs> they're probably doing something weird, though. Volt Switch is completely fine. They're, they're trying to break Sash. Good thing we're Babiri. And I don't care if you want to come with, like, Incin or something. It's another thing. You don't really usually want to set Trick Room until you see the Incin as well. Uh, just because they're so good at dealing with things like Dialga. Let's see what they have. 
Yavel Tall popping it up to, to trying to avoid Max Quake. Yeah, I want to say uh, the thing about Dialga that the, the biggest tip I can give people when playing with Dialga is don't take the bait and hit like Alekis or Zacians with things like Max Quakes. They're they're just going to switch out. Hopefully this KOs. This Dialga isn't as strong as the one, ones I'm used to using. Awesome. Yeah, like Amunguskas can be really, really bulky. Um, but getting that KO, I'll take the double crit into that thing. I will actually take it. I think this Dialga, let me actually just check my stats here. It's probably only rocking like 156, right? 156 nature. I usually you I usually use uh, 196 or 204 on my Dialgas just to uh, you know assure those KOs, and uh, I'll, I'll take that. You're not really as afraid of this thing as one might think. There's two ways that we play this. I'm looking. I'm not afraid of them doubling into the Dialga. I'm really not. You can totally oblivion wing my whims as well. Does whims have tailwind? See, like, this is where I would have also liked to have seen the Tailwind. Just to, like, be able to do it. Because Alga has a speed investment to make it work. Um, we could have outsped either of those. Um, we could kill the Zacian. I don't think we can kill the Eveltal unless we were to Helping Hand boost it. And that would also lower the Zacian's attack. I think that might be able to get the kill, but that's probably a vested Eveltal. My plan is actually going to be, I'm going to try the Trick Room. And I'm going to try the Quake into the Zacian. And I was just talking about not taking the bait. I think this is fine. Um, if Zashin wants to protect and they attack my whims, I think that's also okay. But in reality, they should be over-respecting the Tailwind, right? You should be basically realizing you can KO my whims whenever you feel like it. So there's not really a reason to tunnel your resources into dealing with it. And I don't think they can KO the Dialga this turn. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with them going for like an airship into our Whimsicott. Um, but I think this is just fine. And we can't Oko... It protects fine. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with this. I wonder if they're also just going to drop the Dagus Fidef with like a max... Or they're, they're airstreaming the whims. That's fine. Again, there's nothing inherently wrong with that play. Um, I would have tailwinded if I had it. Probably should have had it. Um, they get a speed boost here. Not the end of the world. We are going to get a Spadef boost on Dialga, which is pretty nice to pair up against the Yveltal. Um, we could bring out Dracovish or Kyogre here. Uh, I'm out of speed control. Dracovish is like cool and bad at the same time. I think Dracovish with rain, even with a slower strong jaw, can KO that. Z like a sorry, a slower um, Fisher's rain can KO Zashin after rain is set. Let's think about this. The good thing is they both have protect. And the mod on the back is lucky, so we need to get a trick room up somehow, some way. Or we can just use Dracovish correctly, but it's probably a Sash Lucky, and I don't really want to have to deal with that. Sacred Sword plus, like, all that stuff into Dialga won't get the KO, and this will actually force them to respect that slot and the AoE potential it brings out. Let's think about this realistically. I could protect this Ogre, but, like, I don't think they're going to respect Ogre. I think they're going to actually over-respect Dialga. So, like, I could go max guard Dialga and just try to get a Spout, but if they nuke my Ogre, I'll lose the game. But they shouldn't be nuking over because they have Lucky in the back. I'm going to go for the Spout. I think they're going to double into the Dialga. I would double into Dialga here. Or at the very least, like, you could sub Zacian with draw. So that, that's great. Um, this is going to be able to get the, the KO on the Lucky slot. We are faster with uh, Dialga than our Kyogre T. Our Darkness is completely fine. Yep. And you went into the Kyogre. It doesn't matter how weak the spout is, we just needed to break Sash. That's the thing, is like, I did not want to miss an Origin Pulse in these situations. And the cool thing about this is Dialga's going to be able to come out here. Oh, and it's Orb Dial, or it's Orb Yavaltal, it's not, um, best, it's my bad. So that's the, uh, we're still getting our plus one spit F back. Boom. So Sash there. Oh, no Sash. All right, well then that didn't matter. Um, it, we, I guess we should have clicked Origin Pulse, but like, we realistically wanted to cover up the fact that like, we didn't need, we didn't want to miss. We still have the Dracovish in the back. Dracovish is pretty decent versus these two guys as well. It's okay versus Zacian. It forces the Zacian into player up situations. And what we're going to try and do is just go for a... Uh, uh, yeah, I think we just go, try and go for the Trick Room. I don't think there's an issue with going for Trick Room. I'm, I'm not that scared of it. You're going to go Sacred Sword plus like a damn, like a, a Max Darkness into my Dialga to stop it, I would say. Because Sacred Sword shouldn't just KO from here. This Dialga is relatively bulky. It's taking three ticks of Life Orb. That's it. So yeah, we're just going to go for the Origin Pulse and try and get up Trick Room. Wish me luck. This is where uh, we would definitely benefit from having multiple Fake Out Setters. 
Um, I usually like Rilla and Grim if you're gonna be using Trick Room and stuff like that. It just makes it so much easier to get off. There's nothing wrong with the Max Darkness into the Dialga. That probably will put me within range for the Sacred Sword. But wait, again, what am I supposed to do here? The best thing I'm gonna be able to do is uh, fire off with an Origin Pulse into the Zashian slot, unless they're subbing. Sacred Sword? Yeah, I, I can't stop it, so. And remember, Sacred Sword just shreds through everything. Not that I had any Steel Spike boost anyways. So we get an Origin Pulse chance. We hit. Almost got the Kaon Zashian. Literally almost lucky. Almost lucky, Kaon Zashian. This is their last max turn. Maybe I should have switched out and just fought the Dracovish. I don't think that was right. No, I think I think I, I didn't get to the right place. So you're gonna definitely go into the Kyogre with something. I'm thinking you go play rough into Kyogre. And um sorry, play rough into Dracovish with a uh you know, a different attack into the Kyogre. I'm actually just going to protect the Kyogre this turn and go for a Ficious Rend onto Yveltal. I think if there is a Pokemon that is protecting, it's Zacian because Zacian doesn't have the, uh, what is it, the stat boosts? The speed boost? And the, so they're respecting Scarfish right here where they shouldn't be. So it's not protecting. But, like, what else would you have me do in this situation? We have no forms of speed control. Dark Pulse is fine. They double into Dracovish, really. That's so nutty for me. That's so crazy to see. No way. Okay. All right. If they get the if they don't get the flinch here, we win. Awesome. That was a weird way to do it. Um, I think Dark Pulse into the Kyogre with a play rough. Maybe they don't have play rough, but like a play rough into the Vish would be able to clean it up. Um, I guess all we have to do is we we have to. I think a spout will kill from here. I'll go for a spout. They're gonna protect probably. Um, realistically, because they're trying to wait out the Rangers. But I do think spout from here will still KO. It's like a ten base power spout. They're just trying to wait out the rain. And then they're going to go after the Dracovish. So not the cleanest game. We didn't get up any TRs. Um, we were not able to sneakily get up any TRs. But uh, I still think we're going to get this one. I still think that uh, the Spout will KO from here. 38 HP strong Spout. So you take out the Dracovish. And you just hope that my Spout won't KO you. But I don't think you go for the Origin Pulse here. I do not think you go for the Origin Pulse in this situation. Just it'll, it'll just miss, you know. Double protect. Really? All right. Well, we just definitely win because we can hit with the we can hit with a freaking vicious run. All right. Let's see if this would have killed. All right. Cool. Yeah. We'll take those first games. Uh, obviously, not nearly as clean as we could have had it, but you know, I'm using a rent code for the first time. I'm trying to get my sea legs up, and I just have to do a better job of getting up Trick Room in the next one. Eternatus, Grim and Cinderella Zashian Torn. So the thing about this team is the restricted Pokemon cannot max. So I almost want to guarantee we're seeing Max Torn. Max Torn is hard to deal with. We definitely want to go Dialga there. We want to get Trick Room up. I think we actually just go Dialga Rilla. We let them Airstream Rilla and get the KO. Trick Room here because we can. We're safe. And then we just bring out Vish Ogre in the back and just rinse and repeat this whole team up. It's the best play that we're probably going to get. Yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, like one thing about... Like, each Anatus and Zacian and all those mons that do double damage against max mons while not having to max themselves, they're super, super good. But because they can't max, they're super susceptible to fake out. Um, which means, you know, if we fake them out, they can't they can't do anything. We know they can't max to, like, waste my fake out turns. And, yeah, the Thundee's obviously going to be the max mon, but we don't have any Intimidators to really make him pop off. Best he can use is Airstream. I still think he should probably think about leading Thunderous. I wouldn't be surprised if it was, like, a bested Thunderous. Um... But like if they lead Thundee Zashian, we just fake out the Zashian, soak us uh, Max Nuck or something, and then we're good. Worst case scenario, I think they actually go for the Airstream into the Rillaboom. Which like, yeah, that is the worst case scenario, but it's not the end of the world. It would actually just open up a spot for us to bring out Ogre. So it's crazy how aggressive this guy's team is. But let's see what they, let's see what they open up with. Yeah, I, I'm a lot more confident about this one. I think our Dialga is probably going to take about 60 or 70%. So Dialga is going to take a lot. They could also leave with a Fake Out user too. Um, their Fake Out users will have a higher um, speed tier than our Rilla most likely because we're speed reduced. So we're going to see whose Rillaboom activates first. But in reality, like, I'm looking at this now. Let me think. Do, do I care about Airstream? Hmm. I see seeds. Huh. Seeds is good. Seeds, please. All right, so I actually need to get that guy off the board. Um, and I can't use, like, Wormwinds to do it because there's a freaking Thunderous on the board. So we need a Trick Room. Do I have a U-Turn? 
No. Oh, these are so bad. First Rilla. And I don't I have just yeah, I have bad mons in the back. I I think you actually just hammer. Cause we our fake out won't work in time. Yeah, I'm actually just gonna hammer the Rilla. It, that really, really Rilla you sucks, because they also have a seeds. Boost the defense. That's really, really bad. Cause like they can just dumpster our ogre. We're gonna have to bring out the ogre and like protect and oh that's so bad. Uh, that's, that's, I mean, it's a good play from them. Um, I think that's the perfect lead to counter what I'm trying to do. Oh, thank God. Like, <laughs> I could not deal with that. I mean, I can deal with it later, maybe, after I max the Dialga and stuff like that. But, like, I can't just be eating those. <laughs> they probably also have Zashin in the back. So they're going to max here. Um, I do not care if they airstream into the Rilla. Like, that's the plan. We're using Trick Room. Um, and then, if that's what happens, we're going to bring out um, Kyogre. And just spout up. I'd love to see Life Orb on this Thundy too, instead of like a vest. I would love that. It's it's not vest on the Rillaboom, which was the only other really popular vested mod on that team. So let's see. Airstream's completely fine. They're like, ha! I stole a KO, guys. I got one. Oh god damn. Oh wait, no, I'll kill myself. Perfect. Yo, shout outs to me. Professional Pokemon player that's plus one using wood hammer to make sure his Rilla went down. Hopefully there's KOs, right? I know it's resisted. Fourth resist. Rilla, die, please! Die? Die, please? Yes! <laughs> Frame perfect. <laughs> That's great. That's so good. Awesome. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to Worm Wind into the Eternatus. I know it's going to raise the attack on the Torn or the Thundee, but I'm going to Spout in case they want to switch into the Zacian to block that. I mean, I guess I could just ignore the Eternatus and double into the, the Thundee. I could. I definitely could do that too. We'll do that. Yeah. Could also go for defense boost here in the Eugenius slot this turn. Now, I think you want to seal up the Thundee. I think it's vested. I don't think your Eugenius is just going to chill here either. Like, I, uh, sorry, I think it's going to protect or switch to Zacian. And, like, if it switches to Zacian, cool. We spouted there, right? We don't have to double into that. And if it just protects, like, He's a god, but I don't think he's protecting. Uh, maybe? That's such a hard sell. I don't think you go into the Thundee, because I don't want to... I also don't want to give the Thund the, the Thundee slot of Defiant proc. Looks like they're staying in. I think they're protecting with the Eternatus. Like, it's such a good mod to run protect with, especially because we saw the Black Sludge, I think. I think it's Black Sludge plus the Grassy Train. But if we get the Thundee off the board, we're in a great spot. And Dialga can 1v1 the Rilla super well. Dracovish is okay against Rilla. Give me the protect, bro. Let's freaking go! That's on cooldown next turn. I'm nuking the crap out of that. And big spouts. Yo, straight up just ignored you. Let's see what damage this does. This probably KOs. 5-4, 150 base single target. Alright, we lose. The game's over. We just lost. It's vested, guys. It's vested. So this is that's a perfect example. Like when we look back. You need to be running a Dialga with more special attack. Um, Dialga needs over 196. Um, you mean needs about 50 more attack with your Dialga set. Sorry, special attack, you know. We're going to lose our Kyogre here. And it's basically going to lose us the game, I think. Um, like, we have Dracovish, but, like, you have the Rilla that can just mix up fake outs here and basically just rinse me up. You have these, you have Rilla plus Zacian. Like, I have, I have no, I needed to steal a KO that turn, and I did not. Like, I guess if they switch in Rilla, we got shots. It didn't matter if we gave him a Defiant proc either. Like, I mean, I guess we're going to get two KOs this turn. I wonder if they're ballsy enough to switch out for, like, Zacian. I can't throw the Quake. I can't. It won't KO. Because we don't have 50, we don't have 50 more special attack. Ejanus is a little bit too bulky. It would have been nice to get a Steel Spike here somewhere, too. So we have to throw we we have to try and get a double KO and then their last mons in the back are gonna be Rilla Zacian. The good news is we'll have like you know two mons that can potentially threaten the Zacian. Oh thank god they're just gonna eat it. We, I guess we got shots, yeah. That'll KO for there. So we're using a slow fish with the big boosted rain boosted vicious run. I'm pretty sure that will KO the Zacian. Um and then like the Wormwind should KO here. Yeet. 
and then you're gonna have real exhaustion with like one to two turns left on my trick room i wouldn't be surprised to see like fake out attack but also like you're not gonna see fake out protect it's gonna be a weird one yeah we'll see we will see there's a zashi and rilla yeah the good news is their max is gone i think i have one more max turn too which is actually sick like it's absolutely amazing i think i can oko their rilla here with a wormwind and if i can't it's because well if i can't kill their rilla with a wormwind here the reason is uh, we don't have like 50 more special attack. Let me see, there's two turns on trick number one, two. All right, we're in a good spot here, actually. Um, I think you actually just double into the Rilla, like just to make sure that it goes down. So like Wormwind plus a Ficious Run in the Rilla, because like that's the one that wouldn't have Protect. Note that they switched out instead of Protecting the first turn, remember? Zashian would be the one with Protect. Yeah. So we see Grassy Glide. Oh my gosh, no. No protectorinos, huh? You're just going deep, huh? Yeet. So that's going to be enough to definitely make the Zashin go down. And then this is also going to lower the Zashin's attack, which is a different thing than getting like a Steel Spike boost. Steel Spike boosts are not nearly as good because Sacred Sword just shreds through it, but it's different when you use a... Uh, I can't believe that Zashin in Protect, by the way. I cannot believe that. No Fake Outs, no Protect, no nothing. We still have a whole Trick Room turn left. You can Protect next turn. Sacred Sword, yeah. Um, you're weaker than you think. You're weaker than you think. If I would've got a Steel Spike like boost, it would've shredded through it, but attack drops are a whole different calc. Yeah, we're in a great spot. You can protect here now, but like I still have two Mons that threaten one-shots. I would I would say they threaten one-shots, but we'll see. Yeah, we just go for the Earth Power. Well, Dialga doesn't threaten the one-shot anymore, but like you're gonna have to soak damage from one of them. I think, I think we're gonna get it. We're gonna see if they have protect. Yeah, they have it. I'm so surprised that... I could have just killed the damn Zashian. Maybe I should have. Yeah, I probably should have just threw two attacks into the Zashian. That's my fault, I guess. Well, no. If I threw a Max Quake into it the last turn and it protected the last turn... Uh, it's hard to say. It is hard to say how this is going to go down. Uh, you definitely trick them with the Dialga, I would say. Because like if they do something weird, like sub... <laughs> you know, like I think Trick Room is just better because it allows us to get another like tick of all this stuff because like even if they kill the dracovish or something like that's another thing who do you think they're going after doug or dracovish i mean i think you fish this run here i don't think they oko the dialga with this with the sacred sword and i i think they oko the dracovish but like we'll see what they go after player in the dracovish i should have protected oh well and we can still crit with the earth power Earth Power Crit will still do it. I should have protected. I would have went after. I would have personally went after the Dialga there. Um, realistically, I would have. I would have went after the Dialga, uh, just because it's obviously going to trick him again. I could have just protected Drake, which maybe you thought it was banded. Okay. Yeah, we have to crit. We might also just not die from this. <laughs> realistically, we might just not die because the uh, Grassy Train's been ticking us up, and you're at uh, neutral right now. And this is the last turn of Grass Train, so I think we're going to do about probably 60 to 70%. You'll get one tick, you'll leave in a Protect, and then I'll just KO you with two of these. You could also crit me, I guess. But I think we're in a decent spot. Uh, Earth Power is a lot weaker than Max Quake, which is usually an Oko. So there's a Protect. Yeah, he's just trying to go immediately into these. That's fine. I will actually take the health right now. It's actually, I think, better that I got my health right now. <laughs> this is the last turn of the terrain, right? No, did you reset terrain? Oh, you did. No, this is the last turn. All right, that's fine. Um, this should be a two shot, and I don't think you Oko me from here. EP baby, give me that crit. We take those. Give me it. Give me the crit. Wins up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The crit factory. I take those all the way to the bank. All the way to the bank. We love to see that. Holy moly, I'm the luckiest person alive today. Right now, though, what we're going to do is we're going to go take a look at all of the EV spreads on, that were submitted on this team, and then I'm going to tweak everything and fix it. So this is the part that I think a lot of people really like to watch these videos for, where I tweak things and show you just how much stats you need to make each one of these team submitted succeed. So let's hop into that right now. All right, so I'm not going to lie. I was super lucky to win both of those games, and... Uh, 
there are a few things on this team that need to be fixed. We can see, obviously, just looking at this before we even hop into the stats, the item changes. Uh, on, on paper, a lot of these items are okay. The Life Orb on Diago is great. The Vest on the Rilla definitely works. Um, the Black Glasses on Grim, I understand that's there for Sucker Punch, probably to make sure you can KO Calyrex Shadow. In reality, Calyrex Shadow does not scare your team. You're using Kyogre Dialga. You can just laugh at an Astral Barrage. So in reality, you don't need to over-respect Cali Shadow that much. Um, I would realistically probably put like the Beer Babiri on the Grim and then make the Grim just a more well-rounded Mon. Um, that's just, again, my personal opinion. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Um, as for the Iron Ball and the Dracovish, that should be another rendition of a power item just because you don't want to double your weight so you take less damage from um, you know things like Heavy Slam and stuff. Makes you just better able to switch in, especially because you have weaknesses to things like Heavy Slam on Whimsicott. So I, I would change the Dracovish's item. The uh, Kyogre with the power uh, lens is okay. And the biggest change you want to make to this team is you need to use Sash on your Whimsicott. There's absolutely no reason you should ever be using a damage reduction berry if you're not already using your Sash because you can reduce damage all you want. Even, but even at full, you'll still get KO'd. Actually, I think this Whimsicott will still probably get KO'd by Behemoth Blade from a Zacian. Um, and in reality, you could just put a Sash there and not die to any move, not just super effective ones. So, little rule of thumb, um, if you're ever thinking about using a Damage Reduction Berry, always just use a Sash first if you're not already using one. So let's start taking a look at the stats here. So this is the, you know, all the stats for the team that were submitted. We're going to take a look at this Whimsicott here, and we're going to start fixing things. Obviously, this was going to be a Sash. And Prankster, the thing that I think I thought about the Whimsicott that I really, really thought that you needed here is Moonblast is okay. I would actually make this Energy Ball for this team just because um, Gastrodon is a really, really good mod against Dracovish. Kyogre, the fact that you have double mods here that don't want to deal with Gastrodon, you're going to need something to deal with Gastrodon. You can even think about going Giga Drain here um, just because you can recap off your Sash if you want. But um, I would say a Grass Attack here is going to be a lot better than a Fairy Attack, just in my opinion on this Whimsicott, uh, where the meta is right now, you don't really need it. Um, and then as for the way this set works, you can see this Dialga has, like, speed reduced nature. <laughs> um, you could move that around a little bit. There's nothing wrong with having a Tailwind still. Because you want to be able to Tailwind with your Dialga, as well as, like, your Dracovish in niche situations. Like, we saw in one of the games we actually played, we would have just won the game immediately if we had Tailwind. If we had to, like, play a much longer one. There's not really a reason for this helping hand, at least in my opinion. I still think the ability to go Tail Room is a lot more threatening than just, like, having a helping hand. And then as for these EVs, they're okay looking. Um, in reality, like, Whimsicots are weird. Like, first of all, 216, for example, doesn't get you anything, right? Um, you know, the way EVs work is the first four, let's take a look at speed for a sec. The first four give you a point, and then after that, it's multiples of eight. So four gives you a point, then 12, then 20, then 28 than 36, vice versa, right? So 216 is in a little bit of a no man's land between two, between 212 and 220. So in reality, like you can see, I'm taking points out when 216 to 215, the number of 122 on the right, it's not going down, right? Because you're in between 212 here and 220, right? So what I would do is I'd, I'd if I were to do anything, I'd drop that on a 212 and put the last four right here. There's nothing wrong with that. That way you're actually hitting just a little bit harder than you think. And uh, I personally would go with the Giga Drain over the Energy Ball, especially because we can switch in a roller to gain the terrain and allow the Whimsicott to still Oko the Gastrodon on the switch in. So it's really, really cool. But um, another thing about this Whimsicott set is I, I don't, I think there's a much more optimal way to use these EVs. So we're going to take a look at like damage calculator real quick. So uh, let's plug in a Whimsicott. Right, because you were Babiri. I just want to check. Um, because remember, if we're sashed, we don't we don't need to be full bulk anymore. There's absolutely no reason, right? So let's just plug in the uh, the whims first, like a Zacian, right? And everyone should be doing these calcs every single time you do anything. Remember to always set things to level fifty. And let's plug in Behemoth Blade. And let's give ourselves a Babiri. I just want to check. So Babiri, Berry, Behemoth Blade. It's still Oko's. If we go two fifty two, it's still Oko's. And you had 40 with nature, which also 40 is one of those things in like, it's in the no man's land of like, it doesn't get you anything. Um, 36 to uh, 44 gets you something, but 40 doesn't. So let's just go with your 40 and make you, I think you were bold. So you don't die to Jolly Zacian with no investment, but like an adamant Zacian would still Oko you. Right? So that's why Babiri, like, not going to be optimal. Um, I actually think on this Whimsicott set, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just going with not that. Oh my gosh, that's bad. Um, we want to just click the button. 
for the most part and just go 252 252 there's nothing wrong with this woman's got set in this situation um you still want to be able to be a bully for things like groudons and stuff like that and so using a full speed whims is almost required on this pokemon again you can make this energy ball you can keep it as moonblast you can make it giga drain um this is just how i would personally play this pokemon but you do need protect you do need trick room you do need tailwind last moves up to you as for the Kyogre, um, I do not understand why this Kyogre has four here, but it definitely should be zero, and it's very important that that Kyogre is zero. If that's the only legit Kyogre you have that has four, you can stick with four, but if you're thinking about taking this to a tournament, you're going to need zero so you can guarantee under speeding min speed or you're, you're gonna force other groudons and other weather users that are min speed that are 90 which is a lot of base 90s in this format uh you're you want to under speed them and be as slow as possible so your weather goes a blast so you have the control you also want to be able to under speed them in trick room so you outspeed them in trick room so i would say really try your best to get that to zero um it's super super important another thing about ogre is that it doesn't necessarily get diminishing returns but you might see a little bit more um value by going with like a something that has like 204 uh or maybe even like a, a 196 into like a 60 here and the reason why i say this is like if we go back to the damage calculator we still have a zashin over here let's plug in a kyogre here so let's just plug in a kyogre and you know you just had 252 right and so behemoth blade does a lot let's plug in like player up as well So you can see Playoff does 81 to 96, which means you're not dying. That's completely fine. But you can see Behemoth Blade does around that half, middle, whatever mark. And so we change it to a 204 and 60. And you can see how that heavily mitigates the percent chance the Behemoth Blade becomes a two-shot. Um, it's a 7.4% chance to two-hit KO. Um, and actually, if you pair that with your Grassy Terrain, it won't KO. So... Um, basically what I'm trying to say is if you can put about 60 points in a respective actual defense slot, like defense or special defense from just HP, you're going to be able to mitigate your opponent's calcs by about 5%. And if you know your calcs, that can be the, the difference in making a move uh, that would normally be like a one hit KO or two hit KO into like a three or four hit KO. And it's actually really, really important. So I would say something like this would be just a little bit more optimal, at least in my opinion. Moving on to the Dracovish. Dracovish does def definitely still need to be like relatively full attack, I would say. Again, this is another one of those situations where I don't know what this is for, this 24, but if you're going to be playing it like this, you actually need to be as slow as possible. So we take a look at like, a Dracovish here. So Dracovish, right? And you had it at 24 IVs in speed with a brave nature. I'm assuming it was brave. Just make sure. Yeah, it was. All right. So, like, basically, we want to be able to understand what our minus calcs are, um, which are basically, like, this is how slow we're going to be inside of, uh, sorry, this is how slow we are because we have the item. So, 41, it's slow, but we really want to be 36, right? That's really, really important. There's a lot of mods that are right around that speed tier that you want to under speed. Um, something like a Calyrex Ice, um, for example. Set that to 50 as well. Take out some points in speed. So, like, you see we're already kind of getting close. We can make it a Brave Nature as well. So the thing is, like, we we are under-speeding that. And I think, was it, was it 24? You did you did under-speed it or whatever. But, like, you, you want to make sure you're under-speeding. Amoongus is another one. Um, and the thing is, like, this is... By taking these zero points out, you're forcing your opponent to, like, be under-sped by this, is what I'm saying. It's like... Yes, you can still underspeed some of these. Let's take, let's make this guy sassy or something. Um, Amoongus, let's do 50. So you can see like Amoongus, that's another like good example of something. So like an Amoongus that's not zero IVs in speed. What was it? Did you did you have 24? I think, it, I think it was 24 that you had. So 37 versus like 36. It's only like one point realistically, but I think it does actually matter. Um, and it's just my opinion. Um, I think it doesn't matter, but you want to be able to force these guys to have to have the zero speeds in those situations. Because, like, let's say you're fighting an Amoongus that has, like, you know, let's say you're fighting an Amoongus that has, like, 24 or 15, or, like, maybe their IVs aren't perfect. You want to know what your speed stats are. That's the thing. I, I guess it's more just I'm always more comfortable when I know exactly what my speed stats are compared to what my opponents are, and I can force them to be as slow as possible. So forcing your opponents to be as slow as possible and then knowing what they can be from there versus, like, when you're hanging out with, like, 24 or whatever, you're kind of like in a weird no man's land, in my opinion. So I, I would just go zero there if I could. Um, that's basically that for that. Um, the Rilla, again, no man's land here, where you're 
kind of in the middle of 196204. So what most people would do here is they would go to 196, right? And they would make the 60. Remember how I talked about like anytime you could put 60 points in a stat, you're gonna throw off your opponent's calcs by about 5%. That's great. You only really need 196 to Oko uh, Sweeper Ogres with Grassy Glide in the terrain, so you're actually good there, or at least make them weak enough to where um, you know the spouts don't really do any damage. So this is the number that most people go with on Rilla. Really, really good stuff. Uh, the Dialga. Now this is a really, really important one. I, I think I mentioned it multiple times in the video to where Dialga is so reliant on having 196 or 204. I'm gonna give you a 204, and then from there, Two, there's nothing wrong with the 232 except for you're wasting points here. You're in the middle of 228, 236. Remember, that's wasting points. I can make this number go down one. It doesn't make the number on the right go down. See, it's still 204. I can make it go down again. It doesn't go down. So you'd want to go down to like 228. And then from there, you see we're still wasting a lot of points. Um, I actually usually... Uh, how do I really do this? What's the best way? Like, you can go like a 52... Because like all the points we have left are 76, and those don't really get cut up that well. And so what I would do in this situation is because our Wims has Tailwind, I would make ourselves look like this. I'd put like 60, because again, 60 is the number you want there. Um, and then I'd put, uh, nah, that's not right. 60 is not right. Um, first of all, you want to do 20. The reason why we want 20 there is because 20 lets us outspeed in a Tailwind or with the use of Scary Face, it lets us outspeed Zacian and Shadow Rider and Ferramosa. So it's a really, really good calc. And even though we're running Trick Room, we're still going to be slower than a lot of things. And then from there, we have extra points. And so you can just do something similar to like, you can go 28, 28, you can go 44, um, 12. Um, I think 44, 12 is fine. Um, but mostly you want to be able to make sure your dialogue can hit as hard as possible to actually secure KOs while being able to actually function inside of Trick Room and outside of Trick Room. So a set like this is going to be just a little bit better. It's a, not as bulky, but it's not really supposed to be as bulky. Dialogue is supposed to deal the damage, at least in my opinion, not soak it. Um, you can soak one attack usually, that's about it. As for the Scrim, again, we do not need the Sucker Punch at all. We also don't need a light screen. Uh, I've talked about this a few times. The Grim set that I really do like in this situation runs the Beery here. So you can basically just soak the one attack from the Zacian. I love the Scary Face. I love the Fake Tears. I think you need Fake Out. That's how you get up the Sneaky Trick Room. You can go Dialga, Grim, Trick Room that way. And then this last move, um, it can be a mixture of Sucker Punch if you wanted it back there. It can be a mixture of Foul Play. Most people go Spirit Break here. Um, I think Spirit Break is going to be really, really good. Um, but Foul Play is also a good one because it, it helps with the Calyrex Ice matchup. Most people go Spirit Break, and then from there you want to change your EVs to uh, effectively not die to Zacians, which like if you were to go back to the damage calculator, let's plug a Zacian in. So like a level 50 Zacian, 252, let's give it Jolly for now, and give it Behemoth Blade. And so this is what I like to do on Grim. So plug in like a Grim Snarl here and make that 50. And so since I like to run Babiri Grim, you can see it still does way too much damage. Let's make this a Babiri. And it still does way too much damage. And so you see, even if I were to go like, you know, 252, 252. Yeah, you see like, they're like, great. You can just not die to that. But in reality, we need to make our Grim Snarl faster than a lot of different Trick Room, or a lot of, a lot of other Fake Out users. You saw one of the games actually, we, we led in a situation where we tried to lead Fake Out and Trick Room and they led with just a faster Fake Out user and we were a little bit boned. So we actually need to make our Grim Snarl faster than all the other Fake Out users. So I like using 100 points in here. Uh, this lets us outspeed even the fastest and sins that any of the pro players run. It lets us outspeed Rillabooms and a few other things. Um, so I, I do like this Grim Snarl set, and in reality, we only have uh, a certain number of points left. We can put 252 in one stat, and then 156 in the other, and so normally I would say you want to max HP first, but in this exact situation, um, you would want to max defense first, make it impish nature, and go 156 there, and you can see if you do that, it makes the Behemoth Blade not KO, KO. and if we go Adamant Zacian, it also makes it so they have a 6% chance to still get the Oko, but that's the best that we're going to get, right? And they shouldn't realistically be able to get that, so, um... And that's with their full adamant, like, balls to the wall Zacian, which is very uncommon. But this is the best shot that we have to not die to Zacian in any of those situations. So these are the changes that I would make to this team. I'm going to post it on the Patreon right now. Let's just do that. And if you guys like this sort of content and you want to see more videos like this, think about letting me know. I do not mind taking the time to, like, fix the Patreon teams that are submitted. And, you know, people have been saying for a lot long, like, for a long time that, you know, they're like, that's a, we, we love these videos. We want to see you actually fix the teams instead of just use them. So that's what we're doing here. Here is, I can't type. Let me just explain why. 
There we go. Perfect. Reply sent. So again, that was the team. Hopefully they leave up the rental code for a little bit. That's another thing. Like people always take their rental codes down immediately after I fix their team. I hope hopefully the people leave up the rental code. So, um, you know, people can just use it. Because this team still technically works. Like it wasted a few EVs on a few mods. Item choices could be fixed just a little bit. Um, you know, I did actually talk about the Dracovish not using an iron ball. But like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, any of these, like power band. There you go. There you go team's fixed but that's basically it guys uh thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this if you did let me know in the comments and other than that peace out and i'll see you guys next time